Roll call, please. I own Couch Here. Helton Here Blades Crump Here Warney. Here. Cryer. Here. Navarro. Here. Crichton. Here. Para. I'm here. Prout. Raina. Here. Scrivener. Here. Bob Smith. I'm here. Phil Smith. Here. Vasquez. And Mario. Here. Thank Thanks. you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public speakers? Seeing none, I'll move on. Consent agenda opportunity for public comment is the same. Any public comment for consent agenda? Seeing none. Motion to approve consent. Second. Second. Roll call vote, please. Couch. Yes. Crump. Yes. Warney. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Para. Yes. Raina. Aye. Scrivener. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. And Mario. Yes. Thank you. Moving along, Caltrans report. District 6. That was fast today. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Chair. Michael Navarro with Caltrans. A few updates. Just want to give the reminder of the last call for the Clean California grant cycle. Those applications are due April 28th. So I encourage you, encourage you to get your applications in. Also, similar to last year, USDOT put out their notice of funding off knows a funding opportunity for safe streets and roads for all program uh, that's a program that caltrans cannot compete for but your local agencies can and going after um, project support bike and pet safety i think last year they awarded nationwide about 500 projects and gave about 800 million dollars so um, we also did if you have a, if you're interested in applying for one we did do, send out a call to all of our local partners for letter of support process if you need a letter of support from caltrans so that should have circulated to the cities and the county as well also want to thank um, this region for their participation in our Caltrans transportation planning grants. Uh, we received 16 applications in our district and four of those did come from uh, the Kern County region. Um, and I, I think they'll all compete very well. They look like good applications. So keep our fingers <coughs> crossed we can bring some money here to Kern County. 
Um, also, uh, this week is National Work Zone Awareness Week. Um, and the following week is Caltrans Safety Awareness Week. So just want to share that. Usually this time of year, we do our, our work of memorials for all those who lost their lives in the line of duty working for Caltrans. Um, since 1921, there's been 191 who have lost their lives. And so we have a ceremony. We put out cones representing those individuals. And unfortunately, we are adding two cones this year. We did lose two employees, uh, one in the District 4 area and then one actually from our District 6, Ali Shabazz, uh, lost his life. They both were census. That one involved a DUI driver and one involved uh, someone running a stop sign. So. Um, we'll be having our, our remembrance at the state capitol on April 27th, and we'll be actually having one here in uh, the Bakersfield Region Office on May 12th, a ceremony for that. As for projects, uh, so old US 99 to White Lane State Route 99 Rehab Project, uh, that project is currently still in construction, and expected completion date for that is fall of 2023. Uh, the State Route 46 uh, Segment 4B project, uh, so no real major uh, change to the roadway construction based on the past weather. The traffic continues to be in this four-lane configuration between Bruning and the east end of the project. That project is scheduled for completion uh, December of this year. Uh, the project, uh, State Route 46, Segment 4C, that project advertised in March and bids were opened yesterday. So the bids actually did come out a little bit under the engineer's estimate. So about 4.6% below, below the engineer's estimate, so that's good news. The uh, State Route 184 Sunset Roundabout project, uh, that project is still in construction and completion is expected to be June of this year. And the Arvin State Route 223 184 Roundabout, that project is about 75% complete and we expect that to be complete in June of this year as well. Um, also, we'll be starting on some projects along, along 184, some of these rehab projects that will address other complete streets elements. So the Morning Drive Rehab Project um, our construction allocation requests will be submitted for the May CTC meeting. And then we're also working on the Weed Patch Highway 3R rehab project, which will be a pavement rehab as well and complete and include several complete streets elements. So that project is currently in design phase. We expect that to be ready to advertise um, by this fall. And with that, that completes my update. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Michael? Go over those first two, Clean California and the other grant. Yeah, so, what so what clean, clean were they California. actually for? Yeah, so Clean California, that um, started last year, was the first year. and the, So there's two elements to it. There's the Clean California projects, for example, the Union Avenue one that Caltrans is doing, which is a Caltrans project. And then there's also the local grants program. Last year, I think it was about $300 million that went out. Um, we had several successful applications in our district. I think about 15 were awarded. There were a few in the Kern County region as well. I, forgive me, I don't remember them off the top of my head right now, but I, I know Shafter and a couple other locations did receive grant funds for that. So this is cycle two. There's $100 million this year um, statewide. It's not quite as much as last year, um, but the applications are due April 28th. And those you have a lot of flexibility, beautification. You can do some of the complete streets work like we're doing on Union Avenue, so a lot of flexibility and there's a zero match, so uh, it's become a very popular program and this is supposed to be you know, the last year of it unless they decide to extend it because of the success we've had with it. Some really good projects are coming out of it. Great, and, and then, what was the other one you mentioned? The second one was a Safe Streets and Roads for All, so um, that, that funding opportunity is now through July 10th, it's through USDOT. And I'd be happy to forward you a link to the information if you'd like. Yeah, if you could, yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Great, thank and you. And like I said, that's one where um, Caltrans doesn't uh, doesn't compete for that one. I think, like I said, of those projects, there was a couple I'm aware of. I think last year, I think maybe one was awarded in Madera County and one in Fresno are the only two I'm familiar with that occurred in our district. But they, I think the ones they did were for like, um, they were like uh, complete street safety action plans is what they did. So they went after the planning pot, but there's mm. also opportunity for education and infrastructure as well. Okay. My, Michael, would you send that information Absolutely. to me? Absolutely. Okay. And what was the, the funding amount for that last one? I don't know what the minimum ask is or maximum ask is for the safe streets for all. The uh, Clean California, there's a $5 million cap for those. But um, if it's okay, maybe I could send it out to to, uh, to Kerr staff. They could circulate to all the all the um, board members. I send it for uh, both programs. Right. I know Wasco is applying for the second. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Good. We got uh, we got, we got five million dollars the last time. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, I think we actually in our region. I think we were, 
of the 12 districts, um, we were third, and we only finished second to like LA and the Bay Area. So for a district of our size, we did very well. And I think we brought in, for our, I'll say we, our local partners were successful in bringing in, I think it was about $46 million in a Clean California grant project in our district. So um, it's a good program. Yeah. I have a question real quick. Um, you mentioned 184. What, what portion of 184? I'm sorry. Uh, there's a couple of 184. So 184, bear with me. I have the limits here. <coughs> Just because I was wondering if there's going to be rumble strips installed or what are, what are they doing on? Yeah, so the, the first one, uh, the morning drive rehab, so that's from, uh, from, Edison, from Edison Highway north of Chase Ave to north of Chase Avenue. So um, that project is going to basically include a lot of ADA improvements, uh, sidewalk, curb ramps, continuation of the bike lanes in both directions within the project limits, and address a lot of the, the, the poor pavement, et cetera. I don't know if it fully addresses some of the flooding issues, but and I'm not sure to your question about the rumble strips either. Okay. Anything else for Michael? District 9, please. Good evening, thank you. Um, I just finished up a meeting with the Department of Water and Power over here to talk about the amount of expected water uh, to be showing up on our highways in the next few months. And someone said that we are in the 110th day of January. So I, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> but um, in anticipation of potential emergency damages resulting from the recent and coming storms, our district local assistance engineer sent out what we're calling a proactive refresh refresher with links to resources on emergency relief programs and the process for immediate opening, permanent restoration, and reimbursement requirements for emergency projects. Um, so I'm sure that will be useful in the coming months. As far as project updates, we have the Rosamond Rehab, Rehab 2. Um, it's a project initiation document that we've got in progress and we'll have public outreach during mid-April and through the month of June. So that will be coming soon. The Cummings Valley Road intersection project, um, paving was completed on February 21st. And so the remaining work to complete the project will be done by, uh, it's anticipated by April 21st. We have Freeman 3 Cap M. Uh, the contract was awarded on February 9th and construction is anticipated to start in May. It was awarded to Griffith Construction and they're looking at 60 working days. And so the construction should end around July. We have an emergency project um, located on State Route 58 to do emergency slab replacement um, located between Keene and just east of Tucker Road. And then uh, we had a virtual public meeting on Tuesday the 11th for the State Route 58 truck climbing lane and our public comment period for that ended yesterday, the 19th. And so we'll be wrapping up that environmental document in the next couple months. And that's all I've got. If you've got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Supervisor Scribner. Uh, thank you. A question I received from a constituent, um, <clears throat> they were asking about the closure of the Boron Rest Area eastbound. That's um, just west of Borax, the Borax Road exit i believe yes. so yes. do you have an update on why that's closed and when it's when it'll be open um i think it's closed because uh they're doing some uh pipe work uh, and i don't know if it's sewer pipe or water pipes or, or what type of, of work that is and i think it's going to be several months but i can get the exact time it'll be closed for you that'd be great if you could just notify mr hakimi and, I'm, and he could i'm sure pass it along to me Thank you. Sure, I'll let him know. Thank you. I have a question, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay. Sure. Kier Kirsten, um, was were there extensive comments on the truck climbing lanes? No, and we had a very low attendance at the public meeting as well. So uh, we've gotten a few comments, but nothing, um, nothing really concerning that we can't, you know, uh, uh, address and, and move forward with finalizing the document. Okay, thank you. And the uh, uh, emergency uh, slab replacement on 58, what's yeah. the timeline on that? 
That should be starting in the next few weeks, and I think it will be um, just, I believe it's just a two or three weeks of construction time. Do you want to know the construction length? Construction length the, and the, uh, the dollar amount? Okay. You can send that to you. me. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Smith. No, that was the questions I had. Oh, Thank okay. you, Chris, Kristen. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? I just I have a comment real quick. Sure. I was in a meeting this week with, I think that Ms. Pacheco organized with local assistants at Caltrans. Um, I think the culture at Caltrans is, has, is changing, has changed. You all are very helpful. Um, I thought the meeting was very, um, was very helpful. And I think Ms. Pacheco, if you're the one who, who, got that the folks together in the room I think that was it was very helpful for them to hear uh, our issues comments concerns and uh, yeah I just I, I think uh, working with Caltrans now is just like night and day it seems like so thank you on my end thank anyway you. I'm I sure Raquel that. is a little bit <laughs> she gets thank something you. different but yeah. no thank you I, pre I appreciate you sharing that means a lot we're, we're trying we know it's it's a challenge working with a big department like ourselves and it doesn't move as swiftly sometimes but um happy we're here and like i said if we ever need more more focused conversation on anything project specific or anything please feel free to reach out anytime appreciate it that will adjourn that meeting and start the current cog meeting all right. Roll call is the same except for Ms. Prout has joined us from Shafter. I was at the air district meeting for special city. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, public comments. Seeing none. Consent agenda. Public comments for consent agenda? Seeing none. Can I have a motion? So moved. For a second. Roll call vote. Murillo. Yes. Bill Smith. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Scrivener. Aye. Reyna. Aye. Kraut. Aye. Crichton. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crump. Yes. And Couch. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Final overall work program, Montavo. Good evening, Mr. Chair and the members of the Kern Cog Board. The fiscal year 23-24 overall work program is an annual administrative procedure undertaken to meet state and federal guidelines, projects requested by local, state, and federal agencies that address regional issues and concerns are included in order to provide a comprehensive overview of the annual Kern Cog program. Kern Cog staff met with federal and state funding agency at its annual meeting on December 13, 2022, to discuss the fiscal year 23-24 OWP. All comments have been received and incorporated into the document, and tonight we're asking the Kern Cog Board to adopt the final fiscal year 23-24 overall work program and authorize the chair to sign resolution number 23-01. Thank you. Any comments? <coughs> Motion? Motion. Roll call vote, please. Couch. Yes. Crump. Yes. Cryer. <coughs> Crichton. Yes. Prout. Yes. Reyna. Aye. Scribner. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. And Mario. Yes. And who made the motion? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. 
I think I skipped over executive director's report, so you can do two of them. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one is very short, so I will combine them. Um, last, last month, if you remember, um, the chairwoman of the CTC joined us. Less than a week later, the CTC met in Los Angeles on March 22nd and 23rd. Uh, the most significant thing to come out of that meeting was their executive director resigned at the end of the meeting unexpectedly. And uh, Tanisha Taylor, who is a veteran of um, San Joaquin Valley COG and um, Cal, -Cog. Cal COG, is the uh, interim executive director and is likely, in my opinion, to be appointed the permanent um, executive director. I'll, I'll let you know when and if that happens. Uh, some of you have uh, participated over the last couple of weeks, in fact, April 12th and 14th, and maybe even outside those dates in our federal certification visit by Federal Highway Administration and Federal Transit Administration. Thank you uh, for all of you who participated and all of you who are not here uh, who participated. Some of you were interviewed individually and some of your staffs were interviewed. The preliminary results are that we have passed, although they don't use that, that term passed. Uh, so thank you all to all your agencies and the staff here for getting us through that. And as a reminder, that's every, every four years. The final report won't be issued until August. And when that comes, I will share it with you. Over the past uh, month, I've continued having meetings on State Route 99 and 58, Union Avenue, 7 Standard and 43, uh, safety improvements on Route 33. Just today we had an update on State Route 46, and uh, Michael mentioned that the final piece in Kern County was, uh, was bid yesterday, and those bids came in low, so within about uh, 18 months we'll have the entire section between I-5 and the San Luis Obispo County line widened and safe uh, for the people that... Uh, Hallelujah. It's only, only taken <laughs> about 22 years, unfortunately. <laughs> Time I flies. <laughs> I continue to advocate uh, for truck climbing lanes on State Route 58, and uh, we're expecting an answer on two of our... Um, applications to the CTC and um, one application to the feds on 58 and 99 and the truck climbing lanes that will be announced the first week in June and as soon as I hear something hopefully good news I will share it with you and finally um, I'll be attending along with one member of our staff the San Joaquin Valley Policy Conference Monday Tuesday and Wednesday of next week in Manteca in your folder this evening is a timeline covering April, May, June, and July. Biking and walking community safety meeting summary sheet, and that is two-sided. Schedule of cash disbursements for feb February, and uh, current COG progress report for projects of regional significance. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman and board members, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, any member statements? I have one really quick. Yes. Uh, in case you didn't know, it's 1973 today. <laughs> and uh, Get Bus rolled out its first bus on the streets of Bakersfield. Uh, I just attended before this our... 50th birthday party out at the Get Bus um, uh, yard, and we will be having pop-ups at CSU in the next couple of weeks, CSUB, uh, Bakersfield College, the Downtown Transit Station, and the Southwest Transit Station, where we have a party bus that will be bringing food, prizes, uh, handouts for uh, passes, and just invite you uh, to either go to the downtown transit station when we, we have it or, or closer, if it's close to your house, up to Bakersfield College and attend one of our um, parties to celebrate 50 years of getting on the get bus. Thanks. 
Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, question. Yes. In the last meeting, there was a presentation of, from the SHCC, um, the Self-Help Cal uh, Counties Coalition, for a half-cent tax, or half-percent tax. Do we know if Kern is going to do this or not, if they're going to put it on the ballot in 24? Uh, there, there's no evidence that any group is is working on that, and uh, I, I don't think it's it's likely. Ah. Any other comments? Saying none, we are adjourned. <laughs>